Corn School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by Headline Amp Fungicide and Pride Seed. Bernard Tobin here on the Corn School today. Going to talk drawing with for engineer James Dick. James, how's it going? It's going well. It's going well. It's a nice day for cutting corn today. Yeah, we're going to try to get some corn off here. And I want to talk about this crop. We've got a lot of immature corn, harvested with low test weight. A lot of farmers out there moving it directly to the elevator. You know, but there's likely an opportunity here, you know, to dry some corn and store it. What are you seeing out there? And I guess maybe are you getting those type of questions from growers? So, yeah, one of the things this year, Bernard, is obviously there was a lot of corn that was planted later this spring than guys otherwise would have wanted. The challenge then is trying to get it to market, trying to get it to maturity before you harvest it uh, on time and fully mature. The risk is if, if maybe you had a little bit of frost before it was fully mature, you could be taking a yield hit. You could see some corn that's a little bit lower quality, especially lower test weight, and that will impact the grade that you get and the price you get on delivery, especially if you're delivering it straight to an elevator, you don't have your own storage capacity, so that can be an issue. Yeah. So let's talk about drying. I mean, and hitting that quality and managing that test weight, it really starts with, I guess, slow drying, right? That's right. So um, when it comes to drying, as I said, if you take it to the elevator, you get what you get. If you have your own capability of drying it, um, actually the speed you dry it at is pretty important and there's been some studies, some work that's shown that actually you dry it slower, you dry it at a lower temperature, you can actually increase your test weight. Now the reason for that is, quick physics lesson, um, the dry matter in your corn kernel is actually a little more dense than the water, so you evaporate some water, you make that kernel a little more dense, um, you dry it slower, you actually, the density increases a little bit more, uh, just gives that moisture more time to migrate out, you dry it too quickly, uh, the moisture can't migrate quick enough it actually causes the kernel to swell, your test weight can go down. Yeah. Talk about temperature, James. How important is it, you know, to actually not to be too hot, but dry that at, at the right temperature? So temperature and speed of drying go hand in hand. Obviously, the lower your temperature, the slower it'll dry, the hotter, the faster. And uh, some work done in the 70s actually showed there was a pretty substantial difference between drying corn at you know, a high temperature, like 180, 220 degrees Fahrenheit versus a low temperature, like 70, 80 degrees Fahrenheit, uh, made a difference of up to a couple of pounds per bushel in terms of the final test weight. Um, so that's enough to move at a grade level or even maybe two grade levels. If you're starting with really low quality corn, that can be a, a big factor. It might be a chance to get some low quality stuff a grade or two higher so that when you actually take it to the market, you get a better price. Yeah. Any tips for growers on you know how to move it through the dryer, you know, uh, and make sure you get a, a better shot of that quality and that grade? So what I can recommend is uh, if you're thinking about trying to tweak your own dryer temperature to sort of optimize it, start with what you would consider a normal drying temperature. Mm -hmm. That's going to depend on your type of dryer, whether it's continuous flow, batch, what have you. Let the dryer come to equalize, measure your test weight going in. Then let the dryer equalize and measure the test weight of the dry corn coming out. Uh, have a look at those two numbers. Are they different? Was there a change? If you notice that the test weight increased, then try dropping your dryer temperature about 10 degrees Fahrenheit, 5 degrees Celsius. Let the dryer stabilize again, measure the test weight again. If it's increased again, then drop it another 10 degrees and keep repeating that cycle until you see the test weight level out. Then you know you've hit sort of an optimal range. You can probably bump your temperature up a few degrees at that point just to make it go a little faster. But that's once you do that, you can really optimize the temperature and get your dryer. It'll drying a little slower, but your quality is going to be as good as you can get it. Let's talk about cleaning corn and uh, you know managing those fines. Uh, that's an important part for the part of the process. Absolutely. You know, if you have access to a cleaner, that's a really good option. You can get the fines out low test weight corn is going to break apart a lot more easily. Um, but even if you don't have a cleaner, you're putting it in your bin, number one thing, core the bin. That means pulling out a few loads until you can see that cone on the top start to go down. What you've done is you've pulled out that central core. That's where all the fines like to gather when the bin gets filled. You pull that out, you can just clean that. You can feed it if you have livestock. You can sell that as a, as sample grade and get a little bit for it. Um, there's options, but that'll get the bulk of your fines out of your bin. Uh, you'll get much more even airflow when you aerate, aerate that bin. Uh, a lot better chance for that grain to stay at good quality while it's in storage. Yeah. Hey, final point, and that is 
storage and handling. What do we need to do there to make sure that, hey, all that work we put into drying and Absolutely. pushing that test weight up is uh, deliverable? Absolutely, so number one is keep your eye on it. Don't store it and, and ignore it. Uh, make sure you know what's going on there. You worked hard for what's in that bin. That's your, that's your salary, right, until you sell it. So keep an eye on it. Uh, monitor visually if you've got temperature probes, all of that. Um, aerate it regularly to keep the temperature even. Don't let hot spots form. Over winter, you want to cool it down, maybe even freeze it, especially for lower quality stuff. That just keeps anything that might be in there, bugs, mold, it keeps it at bay mm. until you can sell it in the springtime. Well, good stuff, James. Hey, thanks for taking the time. Always appreciate it. Always Absolutely. great to have you on Real Agriculture. Thanks a lot, Bernard. Right.